Test, test.
Um, can you, um, oh, okay. can you, oh, okay, okay, okay. Kind of, all right, hopefully, all right, hopefully, wait, I'm going to go, one second, one second, Sorry about all this. This is crazy. Okay. Um, uh, lots of apologies, but uh, why is this? So there should be no audio. What is going on? I don't know. All right. Um, I, I don't. Can you guys hear me? Oh, you can. Okay, that's good. Um, on my side, there's an echo. That's partly what I'm trying. Okay, I'm glad you can hear me, but there's... Sorry, and I will start in a second. Uh, hopefully you could... Re can you read the handwriting of what I just wrote? I'm, I'm just trying to get straight to things. Uh, yes, okay. Thank you. All right, we are going to start this material in a second, but why? I don't know. Well, all right, I'm just gonna try. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try, all right. Tell me if you want me to turn back a page or something, but. The base. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Look, he's here, all of you. You got on my mind lately. Girl, you got my number. You need to call me. I, I so can't trust everything. Was this shit was bothering me. I didn't even know when you took that off. Someone might want to mute, maybe. Thank you.
Okay, again, I'm just going to write for a while because because uh, I'm echoing. So just stop me when you want me to turn back a page, or if you can't read handwriting. Okay, um, I don't know how to stop this echo. God, I, I really don't. Um, it's really disturbing, actually. Uh, I don't understand. Maybe this will work. Okay, test, test. Oh, ah, um, can you hear me? Yeah, oh, good, okay, all right, thank you. All right, so I know, again, thank you for being so patient with all this. All right, so I'm just gonna keep going what I'm doing, but at least now I can sort of talk. What I'm trying to establish, I'm tr this is about the third homework sheet, because in my mind, by the way, I know I'm very behind you guys. Uh, again, we're not behind in life, but I'm behind you, but you don't owe me anything. Just I know I'm causing anxiety when I cancel class and then I don't give a new class, but just know that I know that you haven't done anything wrong. I'm the one that's, and again, this will even out a little bit more when my kids are in school, just to be blunt. Like I, I'm just having troubles and I'm going to start going into John Jay so this um, happens less. But anyway, um, what I'm trying to do now is deal with the material underlying homework sheet number three, the homework sheet called average acceleration. Because in my mind, we have gone through the stuff of the first two homework sheets, um, at least in various lectures that I posted. By the way, again, all these old lectures from last spring are all posted. So if you ever get really itchy, you can find them. But anyway, um, what I'm trying to do now is address this issue of acceleration, which I've said nothing about in class yet. And the way to, um, and there's an issue of instantaneous velocity, both of which are wrapped together in sheet number three. And I haven't said anything about in class, so I'm saying right now, what I'm trying to say right now is, since we're getting more and more into equation land, doing these things mathematically with equations, we have an equation for average velocity. That's what we have, displacement over time. But I wanna stress, that only tells you how to get the average velocity over some interval of time and space. So it gives you one number that's supposed to apply to a whole stretch of time and space. If you want one number for rate for motion that applies to a moment, okay, that's something we don't have an equation for yet. Even as we sailed into homework three, we didn't have an equation for it in a way we figure it out in the midst of homework three. Okay, we don't have an equation for instantaneous velocity. We have a concept in our mind that, um, that there's some meaning to the idea of velocity applying to one point in time and space. Like we have, I believe we have a concept in our mind because I can imagine driving down the highway and having a cop pull me over and say, do you know how fast you were just going right then past that school, right? And he would mean, how fast were you going right then when you passed that school, when you passed the sign that said, do not go this fast. Like, how, you know how fast you were going right then? And if I ever said to a cop something like, well, officer, for the last hour, you know, I left an hour ago and I know I left my home, which is 20 miles away. So I'm going an average of 20 miles an hour. So there can't be any problem. Like if I said that to a cop, that, that would be really dumb on a lot of levels. Uh, even if it was all true, it'd be dumb because that's not what the cop is asking. It's not asking on average, how fast are you going? Because it's true. I could be 20. I could have left an hour ago from 20 miles away, but I might've sat in a parking lot for like 
30 minutes and th and then compensated by going super fast for the rest of the journey and it would average out to 20 but it would i still broke the speed limit somewhere in other words what the cop is asking is how fast were you going at a certain moment uh, at a certain instant at a point in time and presumably the cop believes that there is such an idea as that and it's different from average velocity okay so the um the uh i don't have a formula for it yet All right, if instantaneous velocity means, so from now on, if we're gonna talk about instantaneous velocity, velocity not between two points, but at a point, if that's what it means, and I haven't written a mathematical definition yet, like on purpose, uh, I, uh, oh, excuse me, someone's in the waiting room. Um, what I want is some kind of mathematical way of getting at it, of course. I, what I have right now is an English definition. It means velocity at a point. Now, the only way, the reason I believe in it is because it comes up in context all the time. Like I could be driving down the road and the cop wants to know how fast I was going at some moment during my drive down that road. So like it's in our head as an idea, velocity at a moment. How could I ever believe in it or how could I ever compute it? Well, there's one example on that homework three sheet. There's one example that, I, and you're gonna have to remind me which problem it is, but there's a problem that seems really hard maybe or maybe not, it it says something, and someone please remind me if I get the um, uh, numbers wrong. But well, there's one problem that's trying to show you that the 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 first way we ever, or the way we ever get instantaneous velocity is from constant. Uh, excuse me, from context. The way we know about one point is we look at the context surrounding that one point. For example, and again, tell me if I'm going too fast or whatever, or too slow, but. Here's an example from homework number three. Uh, tell me if these numbers are wrong, but I, one of the examples is if, if I believe, oops, sorry. Not like that. Don't do it to your back. I think maybe somebody should put on mute. Maybe it's something from my house. I don't think so. Thank you. And I think, and again, we'll know, I, I know I'm, if you're following, you'll tell me if I've got these numbers wrong. I believe one of the examples on homework three is that I drive 40 miles in a half hour, and then it asks. Okay, again, do, oh, again, depending on if you're paying attention, you'll tell me, ah, uh, well, someone just entered the room, sorry. Someone might in the chat tell me that my numbers are, are wrong, that it's different numbers, but hopefully you'll recognize this problem from homework three. I'm saying, for example, say, I, say what I know for a fact. Oh, oh, sorry.
okay, assume some situation where I drive 40 miles, let's say, and, I, and it takes me a half hour, let's say. Now, and let's say that I know for a fact that I drove at constant velocity. If I know for a fact that I never changed my speed, my velocity, for 40 miles, that took me a half hour. If someone asks, what's my instantaneous velocity at like the third minute, 21st second, and 59th like millisecond or whatever. At, and again, this is the case in one of the problems from homework three. I don't remember the exact numbers. That can, but if it says you drove at constant velocity for 40 miles uh, for a half hour, then, then you actually do know but, but let me let me back up. If someone just says you drove, if if someone just says you took a half hour to drive forty miles, what was your speed at the third minute? You don't necessarily know that at all, right? If someone just tells you facts about an interval, if they say you took four hundred exams in this class and your average, even if they tell you your average test score was an eighty, if you took four million exams in this class and your scores were changing all the time, you don't know what you got on any given score, right? And if someone tells you you drove 40 miles and it took you a half hour, that doesn't tell you at all how fast you're going at any given moment. Like, and this is a big caution that we set up for exam stuff. You can't, if you know 40 miles, half hour, you know the average velocity for the whole thing. You don't know the instantaneous velocity for any given moment. But if they say, if they say that your velocity was constant the whole time, Okay, then you have a piece of information that nails down the context, right? If, if, and only if, if your velocity was constant the whole time, that is, if your velocity at any given moment was the same as your initial velocity, right? Then, then, and you could say only then, if, IFF means if and only if, just like triple equal sign means if, I mean, just like triple equal sign means equal by definition. I'm saying, well, I shouldn't actually say that. I. I am saying if the velocity never changes for an entire trip, then at any given moment, whatever the velocity is, is the same as the average velocity for the whole trip. Just like if you get the same test score on every single test, if I know for a fact that your exam average in this class is 95, that doesn't tell me what you got on any single test, unless I also know for a fact that you got the same score on every test. If I just happen to know, oh, she's such a good test taker, she just never changes her score, and her score is a 95, then I do know on any given test you name, you got a 95. So that's what's happening here in this problem. I am saying, okay, if you want to know instantaneous velocity, you get it from surrounding context. One way to get it, the easiest way to get it is if the surrounding context happens to be a constant, then you know it, okay? Other than that, we still don't know how to get it. Let me be more, what I'm saying is, Okay, this is starting to look a little bit more like math now. What I'm saying is,
what instantaneous velocity is, right? If instantaneous velocity in English is velocity at a moment in time, then if you really think about it, what that really means is the limit as at, it's the limit of average velocity as the time interval in question approaches zero, right? It's, it's the average, Okay, I'm saying if you imagine two points in time, maybe if you imagine two points on a graph of position versus time, if you imagine two points in time, instantaneous velocity is the average velocity of some motion between those two points in time, but in the limit as the two points in time get brought closer and closer and closer together. In other words, instantaneous velocity really is Right? If you just picture a graph and you have two arbitrary points on the graph, instead of thinking of it as a y x graph, think of it as an x t graph, right? If we put position on this axis and time on that axis and you have two arbitrary points, instead of being x1 y1 and x2 y2, it's x1 t1 and Sorry, it would be easier. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, if you're used to writing, if you're used to writing the one axis, the horizontal axis before the vertical axis. So we have X and T. So we have two points. Instead of X1, uh, Y1 and X2, Y2, we have T1, X1 and T2, X2. The slope between those two points, right? The slope of the line connecting those two points would be change in one versus change in the other it would be like rise over run. Only rise here is measured on the X axis and run is measured on the T axis, right? So the run, so the rise over run here would be delta X over delta T or in other words, X2, 
minus x1 over t2 minus t1. But that is the average velocity The slope of the line connecting two points on a position time graph is the average velocity of some of the motion between those two points on the x t graph. The slope of the line connecting any two points is the average velocity. But the line, right, the straight line between any two points is not necessarily how the motion actually occurred. It's just it, it, like, the, like nothing actually moved directly from one point to the other. It went on that curvy white path, right? So if you want the actual slope at some point, what you want is to, is to estimate the slope of the line between the two points surrounding it. And the, uh, the closer those two points get, the closer your estimation of average velocity will be to the actual instantaneous velocity at a single point. In other words, the average velocity of some motion is the slope of the line connecting the two points. The instantaneous velocity of some motion is the limit of that average velocity as the two points get brought all the way to one. So I'm ultimately saying, so I'm saying V is defined to be the limit of V bar. That, in other words, one last way of writing it, Tell me if you want to go back. I'm saying V with no light. So this is a new definition. Velocity with no bar on top. Velocity at a point mathematically is really the limit of velocity between two points. So velocity at a point is the limit of the average velocity between two points. In other words, it's the limit of if you like delta x over delta t, right? V with no bar over it is the limit of V with a bar over it. The, and, and how do we write that? That is, of course, as you know from calculus, that is Okay, what this says in English on the side, if you can read it, is instantaneous velocity then. Now, I still haven't given an equation, right? But, but, I mean, well, I have, but I haven't given a method. I'm saying instantaneous velocity is the limit of average velocity. I'm saying instantaneous velocity is the derivative of position with respect to time. Like R, I'm Okay, um, and I am trying to subtly say, and I'll move on now, but something, because I know in a way you know all this from calculus, but in a way no one knows anything from calculus sometimes. Um, just notice when you shift from deltas to D, D, D in calculus is what we use when we shift from uh, the finite case to the infinitesimal case. Oops. Yeah, let me, I'm just gonna write that down and then we're gonna move on. Again, you can tell me to go back at any time.
what I just want to note here, and again, this is a calculus thing, but it, um, in technically we know, or in principle, you know, but it makes it a lot easier to understand through physics. I think if you see what I'm about to say, I'm saying delta, delta, the triangle thing, uh, uh, capital delta that you use in math all the time. People often think delta means change. Sure, delta can be used as change, but I think it's easy, even easier to think of delta as meaning difference, like D delta for difference. Now, delta it stands for a certain kind of difference. This is the part that you might not have ever put together from math. Like, like when we say delta y over delta x, rise over run, we mean difference in, you know, delta y over delta x is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Like, Delta X means small but finite difference between two values of X, just like Delta Y means small but finite difference between two values of Y. So when we put Delta Y over Delta X, we're saying rise over run, right? And that is a ratio, we call it slope, and it's the division of one small number by another small number, right? So Delta means difference between two numbers that is small but finite. When we take that to the limit, you may or may not have ever noticed this in calculus. When we go to the limit, which I know, but when you go to the limit, when, when the two values are so close together that they're almost on top of each other, that they're so close that they're as close as you could possibly imagine to them being one number, but not quite actually being one number. And we could talk more about why that's a valid thing if you want. But when you take an interval to the limit so that it's so small it becomes finite, that's when we literally change the delta to a D. So dx, I just want to make this clear, because I don't think this is generally clear after three years of calculus to people. It was not clear to me. Um, dx, lowercase dx, what it really equals, dx is not a derivative, right? dx is part of a derivative. dx is the limit as x approaches zero of delta x. dx is what we swap in for delta x. We swap out delta x when we change from small but finite difference to infinitely small difference. Like, so the whole thing, I just wanna make this one thing clear from calculus that when we use this notation, dy over dx to mean derivative, I want people to realize that that's really on purpose. That really does mean the limit as delta x approaches zero of delta y over delta x. A derivative, it, what I'm trying to say to everybody, and I know you know this, in a big part of your brain, but I want to stretch it here. A derivative is a slope taken to the limit. A derivative is a slope between two lines taken to the limit at, I'm sorry, is slope between two points in the limit as the two points become closer and closer together. So in the limit as they approach a proximity that makes them almost one point. A derivative is a slope taken to the limit. In other words, a derivative is a ratio of differentials. A, a, a derivative is a rise over run, just in the case where the run is infinitely small. Okay, always, always in calculus. So, or, so put another way, dx dt by definition is, dx dt is delta x over delta t taken to the limit as delta t approaches zero. That's always the way derivatives work in calculus, right? They are rates of change in the limit as the interval for that change shrinks to nothingness, okay? Um, so anything you know about, so anything you know about derivatives, any comfort you do have from calculus can be used here. In that sense, I am giving you a procedure now. I'm saying the instantaneous velocity is the derivative of position with respect to time. So if you know, so if you know a position function, you can immediately get the velocity function. One thing, remember a function, a function in general is put a number in, 
take a number out, right? A function is something where the input is a number and the output is some other number. I mean, there's other rules about functions too, but first and foremost, a function is a relation, which means you put a number in, you get a number out. What I want to remind you is, remember, Now, just note, a function takes one number in, pops another, another number out. The function has an input and an output. And you can map it on a graph, like it has an x coordinate and a y coordinate. That's like a function, right? An operation takes a function in and spits a function out. What the heck am I talking, like, why am I bringing this up now? What is that? Well, derivative from calculus, the thing that was required for this course, and who knows like where it's going to come up, whatever. The things that you do in calculus, like take derivatives, are operations. A derivative takes a function in and spits a function out, just remember, right? A derivative can never directly speaking produce a number. You cannot take, and you cannot take the derivative of a number. You can take the derivative of a function and it'll spit out a different function. Then you can evaluate that if you know particular values, if you know more information, then you can evaluate and get a particular value. That's just like with integrals, right? You can integrate a function and get another function. And if that's an indefinite integral that you're doing, then you're done there. If it happens to be a definite integral, then okay, you get a new function and then you can evaluate that function and spit numbers out of it. But when you differentiate, you do it to a function, you get a function. So just as an example, so, so if I'm saying instantaneous velocity now, So just to say, and again, this does not, do, I'm just uh, to continue what I'm doing right now, I'm trying to say, I've given you one more equation today, or I've given you one concept, one definition, which is instantaneous velocity is velocity at a moment. Mathematically, what that means as an equation is that instantaneous velocity is the limit of average velocity, or in other words, instantaneous velocity is the derivative of position with respect to time. What I just want to tell you though right now, just to make sure that's clear is, that can be very useful, but could also be deceptive. It's most useful if you have position expressed as a function of time. If you know a position function, then you can differentiate that and get a velocity function, right? But if you just know numbers, calculus doesn't do anything for you. So just to make clear where this calculus does something for you is it, and again, this is all, this is like sidebar from the homework, but if you know x equals 1/3t cubed plus 5t, like if that happens to be given, then you can get that the velocity, then you can do that the velocity function is the derivative of position with respect to time. So I can differentiate this function and say, okay, I could do the power rule, like three times one third is is one. So I'll get t squared plus five. Okay, that's what I would get for velocity. And that's all I know until someone says, what's the velocity at t equals two or something? Then I can plug in and say, oh, at t equals two, v equals two squared four plus five, nine. Okay, just to make that clear. All right, so, so what we know about velocity right now is it's the derivative of position. That tells us something if we know something about position. But other than that, what it really is saying in English is the way you get your velocity right at a given moment is you have to know something about the larger context surrounding that moment, okay? Um, so the other way,
just uh, again, just to try to bring this now back to the thinking underlying homework three, okay? Because we're, we're, uh, we're, we're, the question at hand is like, how could you know how fast something's going at a moment? We sort of have an idea that of how fast something's going on average from here to there, if we know how far it went and how much time that took and divide, but that's average in an interval. What if we want to know how fast something's going at a moment? One thing that we've now said is, well, you could use calculus directly. If you have some rule, some function that tells where it is at any given moment, then you could figure out how fast it's going at any moment. If you ever, but what if you don't have that kind of rule? Well, let's go back to number line, something we did at the end of the number line sheet, which I know was like two weeks ago. But toward the end, like the, whole, the number line sheet was like maybe a little bit not so hard until toward the end. And I remember a couple of people asked questions right at the end. At the end of number line, it asked a couple of times like, where are, where is the instructor at time equals seven seconds or something? It asked where the instructor was at, cer at a certain point that we actually had to think about. Like we didn't know offhand, the instructions didn't tell us offhand, but we were able to figure it out because we knew how fast the instructor was going. So we inferred from that, we like retro engineered, reverse engineered. We knew how fast the instructor was going. So we were able to figure out where he was at a given moment. In other words, Like in the, it sounds very obvious, maybe hopefully, but in the past we did this thing of, oh, if your overall rate for an overall interval is length of interval divided by duration of interval, then you could flip that around and say, oh, how far you get in the interval is your rate times your time. Like distance equals rate times time is essentially what that second equation says. Well, we can do the same thing here. We can say, we can say how fast you're going at any given, just we can say, if you know the rate, if, if you know you're always going the same velocity, then it's no problem at all to figure out how fast you're going at any given moment, if it's always the same. If it's changing, that's where things become tricky. But if we know how your velocity is changing, then it's not so tricky. In other words, I can say, okay, this is a new equation now. And I, I'm going to summarize on the next sheet, like what equations we have so far and what we don't. But I'm now I'm introduced. I'm introducing this for the first time. I'm saying, and this is back. This is the again all related to homework number three. I'm saying let's define from now on a with a bar over it. Define triple equal sign to be change in velocity per time. Remember, like v, v means velocity. V with a bar over it would be average velocity for some interval. But now we have some concept of velocity at a moment without a bar over it. I'm saying change your velocity from one moment to the next, and we're going to call that acceleration. Your average acceleration for some interval is how much you, is the rate at which you change your velocity throughout that interval. Okay, so to summarize so far, This is what we know so far, either because, largely just because we defined things. We know I'm going to say, this is, so this is what we have so far. Just like we defined the average velocity for some interval to be how much your position changed for how much the time changed, I'm going to define average acceleration to be how much your velocity changed per how much the time changed. It is an analogy. It's, it, it's like the same type of reasoning, but now we're going one step further. Um,
And if you're following what I'm doing, I can even go another step further. I can say, if this is true, so, so, so remember, averages apply to intervals, instantaneous quantities apply to points. So I can have a position at a point, I can be somewhere at a point in time, and we call that a position, and it has x with no bar over it. I can have a velocity at that moment, we call that an instantaneous velocity, and it would have no bar over it. If you change where you are from time to time, we call that average velocity. If you change how fast you're going from time to time, we call that average acceleration. We can even go one step further and say, okay, instantaneous acceleration, if you're following, this will be the limit of average acceleration, if you see what, it, okay? So in effect, you could say we have th four equations, if you like. Two of them really tell you how to compute something. The other two say refer to calculus for the computation. Um, this is what we have so far, but um, okay. Um, going back to, to an example of average acceleration. So average acceleration is the rate at which you change your instantaneous velocity, like average velocity, average acceleration is rate of change of instantaneous velocity per time. Um, and an example in the homework three sheet was uh, like my Toyota Corolla. Uh, um, and again, please correct me if you're looking at the homework and I got the numbers wrong, but um, it gave an example um, uh, um, of a, I think it was a Toyota Corolla uh, that could go zero to 60, but it took a long time to do it. What was it? And please, if someone is still with me and still looking, if someone could remind me um, the problem on, I can look it up too, but if someone has it quickly, on homework three, the one of the warm up acceleration examples um, uh, is uh, uh, of a Toyota Corolla, but I'll do, I'll do a quick example now until soon. Wait, okay, sorry. Okay, and this is, okay, so sorry. Uh, so this is, this is example three from the homework. Uh, we did, we actually have done now example two. If anybody's still with me, and I, it would be difficult to be, but uh, in principle in this lecture, I've already now covered example two from the homework from this sheet. Now I'm doing example three from the homework sheet. Like I have a Toyota, it says, I have a Toyota Corolla that goes from six, zero miles per hour to 60 miles an hour. Okay, it goes zero to 60. But any car can go from zero to 60 in principle. I mean, it, what makes uh, one acceleration more impressive than another or higher than another is how much time it takes me to go from zero to 60, right? Like no car commercial on the, in the world would ever go like, the new Ferrari does zero to 60. 
like that doesn't mean anything. If they say it goes zero to 60 in 1.3 seconds, then like supposedly that means something because it took such little time to <coughs> change speed so dramatically. So just like, by the way, just like saying, I'm a really fast runner. I'm a really fast runner. Oh, how fast a runner are you? Well, I can do the 100 yard dash. Like if I just say that I can do the hundred yard dash, that doesn't say that I'm fast at all, right? I can run a hundred yards, maybe means I have endurance, but it doesn't mean I'm fast until I say I can run a hundred yard dash in 0.3 seconds. The lower the time, the faster the rate. Same thing with acceleration. Going from one speed to another, it doesn't mean anything about acceleration. Doing it in a certain amount of time does. So in this example, if I want my average acceleration here, it's going to be the change in my velocity, the change in my velocity per time, just like average velocity is change in position per time, okay? So in this case, the numbers given here in the homework example about the Toyota Corolla, my final velocity there is 60 miles per hour. I started with a velocity of zero miles per hour. Now, according to the problem, I was told it took me two full minutes those are the facts of the problem. So I can put these facts in into the definition and say, okay, 60 minus zero is 60 miles per hour over two minutes. I can do this. And what I'll get is 30. But now if I'm a scientist and I'm careful about my units, I do have to keep track of the units, but it doesn't mean anything's wrong yet. Wait, I'm going to write on the other side. I mean, I'm going to write the next page. I have 30 miles per hour on the top, but minutes on the bottom. Is that a problem? Well, yes and no. Let me at least, miles per hour mean miles per hour, right? So what I have is miles per hour, and this is all per minute. Now, th this is actually not a horrible, first of all, that is the answer, that is an answer. My acceleration, if, and again, this is from homework number three. I know I'm all over the place in a way, but really in a way, I'm just very slow. Wherever you are, please be looking at homework number three. This is like example number three. This is exercise number three in homework three. It is just a plug-in, but I'm trying to make a point about something. You've got this Toyota. It takes two minutes to build up from zero speed to um, a speed of 60 miles per hour. That means it's speeding up 30 miles per hour every minute. Now that is a valid acceleration. Let me just say, starters, the average acceleration of this car is 30 miles per hour per minute. Oh, sorry, someone's in the waiting room. The one thing I want to cl make clear first before going on, especially since this is a science class, like in terms of units and everything, units totally tell you something, units totally matter, but but in a, but in an intuitive way, like let, um, uh, in a friendly way, what I'm saying is this car accelerates at an average rate of 30 miles per hour per minute. There are two units of time in this answer and they are different units of time that is not an error or a mistake or a problem. We can convert so that they're the same and we will in a second. But not only is this a legitimate way to say something, but it actually in many ways is a more clear way to say something. What we're saying when we talk about acceleration now, average acceleration is that every minute this car gains uh, speed, uh, an amount of speed of 30 miles per hour, like speeds are distances per times. And this guy is gaining speed every unit of time. So every minute, this car is gaining on average 30 miles per hour of speed. And that is a legitimate thing to say. And in my mind, it actually is clearer than some other things I could say. I'm saying every minute, this car is gaining on average 30 miles per hour of speed. It's average because I don't know that that's exactly what's true. Like it could be like slamming on the accelerator and then pulling back. I don't know. 
but it gained a total of 60 miles per hour and it gained it in two minutes. So on average, it gained 30 miles per hour per minute, okay? There's two times in the, in the denominator and you can say literally, like you can write it the way I did, 30 miles per hour minute. Now, you can also convert to make the units consistent. I mean, to make them the same. You can, and in some ways that makes it simpler, but in some ways it doesn't, it's a choice. But I, I think it asks you to in this car. But so far, so one answer, so in, in miles per hour per minute, A, we got was 30 miles per hour, and they're both in the denominator. Okay, but we can convert. We can make it all minutes or all hours or all seconds, so, you know, whatever. We can be consistent. We can also convert the miles to meters, but there's no, I don't think there's any real reason to do that here, unless it, maybe it asked, uh, did it ask to? Maybe it asked. Oh yeah, no, right. So we can leave the miles as miles, but just for consistency, it wants to see um, if we can convert those miles per minute into seconds and seconds. Okay, sure, sure. And let's just be careful. We're gonna do this once just to be careful. The way I, well, so we've got this miles, I'll try to be one per hour per minute. So I know I want to multiply by conversion. Now, again, everybody does unit conversion differently, slightly. In a way, everybody hates unit conversion, believe me. No one finds it interesting in a way, but it is super, super powerful. And one does want to not have it as a hurdle. So the way I do unit conversion, just if it helps anybody, is of course, I know, I have to know my conversions. I know that there's 60 minutes in an hour, and I know there's 60 seconds in a minute. The question is always whether to multiply or divide. Like for most people, the issue is, am I multiplying or dividing? But the way I always do it, just so you know, I always multiply. I always multiply, and I just, dis and I always multiply by one, right? Something that equals one, because that's what's always legal. But to decide, so I always multiply, but I just decide whether something goes on the top or on the bottom by making sure units cancel out. So in other words, I know I'm going to multiply by, I know there's 60 minutes, uh, sorry, six, uh, yeah, 60 minutes in an hour. Uh, so, so sorry, sorry. I want to convert both of these to seconds. I know, for example, I want to convert those minutes to seconds. I know there's 60 seconds in a minute, but it's the minutes I want to cancel out. So I want minute on top and seconds on the bottom. When, I'm con when I wanna get rid of these minutes and convert them to seconds, I know I've gotta cancel out minutes. So I put the minutes on top and the seconds on the bottom and I say, oh yes, there's 60 seconds in one minute. Now that would be multiplying by one, right? So the minutes will cancel out and I'll have seconds, but I also wanna cancel out those hours. So I'm gonna say, so I'll do that first. So I have point 0.5 miles per hour seconds, right? The minutes canceled out and I was left with the seconds and I divided by 60. Now I got to do the same thing to get rid of the hours and change them to seconds just because the question's asking for seconds squared. So I know there's 3,600 seconds in an hour but I want the seconds to cancel. So I'm going to put the seconds on top. Oh, sorry. No, I want the, I'm sorry. I want the hours to cancel, I want seconds. Okay, so the hours are gonna cancel and I have one half over 3,600. So I'm gonna have So now I have one over 7,200 miles over second times second. Okay, that's a crazy number, right? This is all solving for A, and we're gonna end up in this example. Um, so one over 7,200 is a tiny, tiny number. Excuse me for one second. Uh, uh, sorry. We are, I know I'm aware of the time we're going to stop in one.
I might be missing in this one. One, two, three, four. I believe that's correct. Um, so first of all, one over 7,200, tiny, tiny number. It's uh, 1.39 times 10 to the negative fourth, I believe. Um, yeah, I believe you could do it. it. might be 10 to the negative fifth, I think that's right. Um, but notice that the units that I get in the end are miles per second squared. Second squared just meaning seconds times seconds. It doesn't mean we're really squaring time or anything like that, but it does mean that there have to be two references to time that come into the answer. We could have said miles per second. We could, uh, sorry, we could have said miles per second per hour. We could have said miles per minute per second, or we could say something like miles per second squared, but there have to be two references to time in the answer because it's a rate of change per time in something that's measured in time, all right? But this is the average acceleration for that example. Average acceleration is rate of change in instantaneous velocity per time. Um, there's, I think I'm gonna stop with that. I'm gonna ask you again, I, again, I have to catch up with you. I'm not gonna assign any new homework for a bit until I get myself caught up with you guys. Again, it will come out in the water. Like you won't be deprived of education I probably in the long run. Well, you will, but uh, we will get to all the material. Um, I'm not assigning anything new. I will just ask though, like, w please do, um, I'm about to teach the other class in a minute. I'm gonna to try to go over different examples with them. If you can, please check out the other video when they get posted tonight, if, assuming they do. Um, if you have a choice, if you have a moment, please check out the other classes. I'm gonna to try to do it slightly differently and cover more material there. Um, but we'll just keep going where we are on Wednesday. There's nothing new. Uh, I don't wanna keep you late. Um, and I have been starting to catch up with emails to, to catch up with like college recommendations and stuff. I, uh, is slow it, it will all speed up i apologize but you're if you just um uh, keep doing what you're doing you're fine uh so i'm going to go to the other class in a second with any can you just like give me hands if you could hear any of it i mean are you still did we i don't know if we covered anything could you give, give me a thumbs up if you're still hearing me as of this moment or is that really left oh, thank you very much i totally appreciate it justin okay thank you i appreciate it all right so Again, thank you for bearing with me in these crazy times. Uh, we will continue with this Wednesday. If you see the, if I post two videos, please watch the other one. Uh, uh, yes, okay, I'm gonna go. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, I post them all, well, oh, I post them all on YouTube. Um, the, here's the link. Um, the YouTube link is, well, YouTube channel is Professor Yaverbaum. I know that, I believe, I know that this, I have to fix, this link does get you to, the, the link I'm about to type does get you to the channel, but I know it gets you to a playlist from a different class. So you have to pop out of the playlist, but this does work and I will try to have a faster link. But, um, so yeah, I'm, and, and, and of course, one advantage of subscribing is you'll get notification every time I post one, but they're all on this, they're all on the channel, Professor Yaverbaum on YouTube. Um, that link does get you to the channel, but it doesn't get you, it gets you to the wrong playlist. I apologize. So I'll make a new link at some point. I think actually, I'll try this. I believe this actually. Uh, it's a, there's a bit, I believe, someone will have to tell me if this works, but I believe this is the channel. Or however, I always forget how bitly. But anyway, all right, I'm gonna go and teach the other class now. I apologize. Oh no, that's that bitly is wrong. I'm sorry. I'll fix that. But 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 anyway, I'm gonna teach the other class now. I will see you guys soon.